So, have you watched Tenet from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it. And today I'm going to do a movie review on Tenet. Yes, I have finally watched it in the cinemas yesterday with two of my friends. As you can see, this is the ticket as proof. Don't worry, there are only nine new cases in in the entire country right now, okay? So, it's fine. So anyways, Tenet is a movie written and directed by the one and only Christopher Nolan, who is one of the most popular and famous directors and writers of our generation. And in my opinion, he deserves the high praise. I mean, he had made amazing movies such as Inception, which is a very creative, imaginative, mind-blowing movie about dreams and uh, consciousness and subconsciousness. In fact, Inception became my favorite movie of the entire 2010s. He had also made The Dark Knight as well as Batman Begins and The Dark Knight Rises, the Batman trilogy, which is easily three of the best movies in, in the DC universe, period. Yes, it's that good. In fact, The Dark Knight, in my opinion, is the best superhero movie ever because it's just so dark. It lives up to its title. It's gritty, but also it's smart and it's constantly captivating. But we also have movies like The Prestige, which in my opinion is incredibly underrated. It's been a long, 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 long time since I have been so intrigued and interested by a movie that isn't even all that supernatural. Uh, other than that one thing in the movie, which I will not spoil. And he had also made Interstellar, which is also a very popular movie, even though I don't think it's one of his better ones, but I still think it's pretty great as well. And it's this really emotionally powerful and grandiose and ambitious space wormhole adventure movie. We also have the more experimental and less accessible, but equally as impressive war movie that is Dunkirk and also other movies such as Memento which is one of the classics of the 2000s where the main character tries to trace back his own life with an amnesia. It's all very very interesting. Christopher Nolan is the master at writing stories. When Hollywood is filled with sequels and remakes and reboots and prequels and spin-offs Christopher Nolan is out there writing new and creative story, just banger after banger. And we have Tenet this time, and um, I'm gonna be honest here, okay? I'm, 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 I'm gonna be honest here, I'm gonna be honest here. It's not as bad as I thought it is. I don't know why, but before going into Tenet, I thought, okay, it's definitely not going to be as good as, you know, The Dark Knight or Inception or Prestige or Memento. I know that. I know that it's not going to be one of the best uh, Nolan films, okay? I can tell from the trailer. Um, but I still went in thinking that it's going to be alright, it's going to be okay. And actually, it's more than okay, it's more than alright, it's actually great as well. I mean, again, it's not one of the best Nolan films because Nolan had made a lot of 10 out of 10 movies, but still, Tenet is great. It's good and great between just between good and great and uh, Tenet is essentially a movie about a Russian guy uh, the main character is is an American but the villain of the movie is this Russian guy called Sator who has been collecting pieces of a nuclear bomb so he, he's trying to assemble all of them together and destroy the world and the main character, who doesn't have a name, played by John David Washington, last saw him in Black Klansman, he's pretty good in it. John David Washington's character is called the protagonist, and he has to try to stop him. And he, he has to do anything to stop him, including reversing time, 
which is what he does for some time in the movie. And we also have the supporting character, Neil, played by Robert Pattinson. I'm really happy for Robert Pattinson. I mean, he, he's been blowing up lately. I mean, he started off with Harry Potter 4 and Twilight, which, I mean, Twilight, we all know that Twilight's not good. But he sort of redeemed himself by starring in indie films like Good Times, written and directed by the Safdie brothers. Last year, he's in The Lighthouse, written and directed by Robert Eggers, who is... Mm. And he also did this period piece with Timothy Chalamet, which I didn't see, but good for him. And he's about to become Batman, so that's great. And he's also starring in The Devil All the Time, so... Uh, he's he's been popping off. He's been popping off, and I'm really happy for him. And he's now in a Nolan film. So guess what? Um, and Neil's um, yeah, he's he's the supporting character. And Sator has a wife, and the wife is Cat, played by Elizabeth D. Bicky. And the the bad guy Sator is really mean towards his wife, abusive even. So Cat is like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you, the protagonist, uh, save the world by stopping my husband. So it goes something along the line of that. Now, a good chunk of this movie is spoiler, so I'm not gonna get into the spoilery parts yet. Uh, but that is basically the plot of the movie. So if you go into the movie thinking that you're gonna see some crazy time travel epic. Uh, maybe you're gonna be disappointed because a good chunk of the first half of the movie is just spy movie espionage but the second half of the movie phew, mind-blowing just I'm just shocked I, I sat on on my seat in the cinema and I'm just glued to the screen because it's such visual spectacle and the way that the story progressed at the end, the, the constantly back and forth and back and forth, it's like another layer upon another. I'm just impressed. Christopher Nolan is um, just never ceases to impress its audience. Um, but uh, of course, there are a few things about the movie which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, for instance, the first half of the movie is just very, very convoluted. The whole time travel concept, the whole forward backward concept inversion that part is rather simple to understand where atoms are inverted because their in entropy is is reverted so they start going backwards uh okay fine uh but the complicated part is the people connections to get to this bad guy sator you need to meet this Indian man and this Indian man's wife this Indian woman called Priya has something to do with everything and then This side character Neil is somehow connected to this other person and Kat and then Sator and and all, all this stuff It's it's all very complicated and I believe that the script originally is very long uh, but because Then the movie would be very long so the studio told Nolan to cut some scenes from his script I believe that's the case, but it would make a lot more sense if this movie is, I don't know, three hours long or something. Because I feel like this is one of those rare movies where it would actually benefit so much more if it has more exposition because the world building is just so damn complicated and convoluted. Um, yeah, uh, another thing uh, is that um, because the first half is very complicated, you don't really know what's going on, you can't really catch up with what's going on, you're kind of not invested in any of the characters or the story at first. But later on, when it's clearer, it gets more and more interesting. Another thing about this movie that sort of bogs me down is the um, sound mixing. I don't know why, but uh, a lot of people complain about this as well, and that is um, the dialogues are always mixed so quietly, while the score and the sounds are mixed so loud, so the dialogues are completely overshadowed and we can't hear anything. It's a good thing that I live in Hong Kong because I get free subtitles, but uh, people watching it in the USA or the UK may not get that subtitle service so that's a problem for them i guess um and uh, i guess another thing about this movie i i don't i'm not complaining about it but 
it's the story is just not as um, complete. It doesn't feel as complete as some other Nolan movies and that there is a thing that everyone's trying to go after in this movie and that's the nuclear bomb that they're trying to destroy uh, or to put it simply nuclear bomb but actually it's a, a thing that has multiple pieces nine pieces and they're called the algorithm and they need to be assembled together to form some sort of nuclear reaction um, so they're trying to go over this go after this thing and this is what a bulk of the movie is sort of about but uh yeah still i think this movie is a genius movie the idea of reversing time is genius i mean when people talk about time travel movies they're always like oh yeah you know i'm just gonna go back to the past and then just live move forward or i go to the future and then i move forward but this type of time travel movie i don't think it has been ever I don't think it has ever been explored in movies before like this reversing time straight up literally reversing time while people move forwards the main characters are moving backwards but in their perspective they're moving forwards and other people are moving backwards because in their perspective they are moving forward but in backwards time and uh, it, it's just crazy. There are things happening in reverse and, and things happening in forward time, in normal time. There's this war sequence, battle sequence towards the end of the climax of the movie where a building gets reformed and then another part of the building blows up in normal time. It's really just visual spectacle. But my favorite part of the movie isn't even the battle sequence i think it's the uh second last action sequence where um well i'm not gonna spoil what happened but it's just like jigsaw puzzles finally fitting together the forward and the backwards it's all making sense now oh my god it's all together oh it's i love these moments and uh i like the music too god damn uh Hans Zimmer is not responsible uh, for the uh, composing uh, of the music of the movie, surprisingly, because he's working on Dune with Villeneuve. Uh, so Nolan actually got Ludwig Göransson, who um, who also did Black Panther and some other Ryan Coogler films as well. And he's actually great. He's he actually he's actually great. And also some some scores in the movie, some soundtracks. They're actually in reverse, you know. So it, it just ha has that reverse quality to it, which is really, really nice. And also Travis Scott's song at the end, uh, it's actually not that bad. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's not that bad, you know? Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna go into spoilers now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into spoilers now. If you haven't seen Tenet, uh, go to the description. You'll see a timestamp um, and you can tap or click on the timestamp and go to the end and see my score. All right, I'm gonna keep it quick and simple here. There are a couple of inversions. Uh, inversion one, where after the car chase in Estonia, Cat got shot by um, freaking Sator. And um, in order to save Cat, uh, all the main characters just decided to invert themselves. And we have a reverse car chase, and that scene's really cool. And and after that scene, I thought the entire movie would be symmetrical, where okay, because the first half of the movie is opera, airport, and then car chase. And I thought the entire movie would be symmetrical, so car chase, car chase, airport, opera. So I thought the climax would take place at the opera, but it didn't. In, instead it took place in a whole different place so okay cool fine whatever but the inverted car chase that one was awesome because everything finally makes sense and when you see a third car in the beginning in the first time you watch the car chase scene and you you see this third car and you're like wait who's driving the third car we have the we have the protagonist we have the antagonist who's in the third car turns out the third car is also the protagonist just just inverted He's, he's just going back um, so that's really really cool and then we have the airport scene which is my favorite in the entire movie where everything just comes together 
when uh, Priya, the Indian woman, was like, okay, uh, the, the dude you fight at the airport, that's actually the same person. Uh, turns out the dude is also the protagonist. Also the protagonist. So at that very moment, there were three protagonists, not really three protagonists, but what we see in the movie, it, it looks like there are three protagonists in the movie just fighting at the same time. It's just really, really cool. Uh, the climax of the movie, the military base, they actually went to uh, Stark, Stalk 12 or something. I don't know. They went to this place and they're trying to do this temporal pincer movement where half the troops are going forward and half the troops are going backwards. And the troops who are going backwards need to wait one hour. So after all the troops uh, in red team, the forward team, they come back. And then, at the same time, the backwards team is going to go back. So they're doing a temporal pincer movement. So what happens at the end... Uh, so the blue team, the backwards team, knows what happens at the end. Because for them, it's the beginning. So the blue team knows that. So the blue team will report it to red team. And the red team will know what the hell they're doing. And then the result of what red team does will be shown to the blue team so it's like a like a loop um so uh we have neil's character who halfway through he decided to revert himself back to normal time and uh, the protagonist is a normal the whole time because he knew that there's a there's a booby trap and um and then when the protagonist was locked out of the door trying to retrieve that nuclear thing Suddenly, this dead corpse went back to life, unlocked the door, and got shot. And then this this person just runs away. Turns out this person is Neil. Because this person has the same trinket thing as Neil does in his backpack. And Neil realizes that he is the only one who's able to save the protagonist. So he sacrifices himself. Which is really awesome. We don't really see Neil's ultimate sacrifice at the end. But we kind of already did. But we didn't know it at first. But we already saw it. And I, I just think that's a really creative scene. And there's also a twist where where the protagonist is like, Who hired you? Who hired you? He, he's asking Neil. And at that moment, I'm already like, I, I bet my ass the protagonist hired Neil in the future. Uh, which is actually the case. So... There's that. I mean, I'm not saying that the twist is bad. It's a little predictable is all. I just really, really love the fact that Nolan uses this time reverting concept and make it so interesting. Because usually when you have a time travel concept, uh, making it interesting, it's another thing. Making uh, a confusing time travel concept is one thing and making it relate to the plot is another thing. So we have the airport scene, which isn't really related to the main plot all that much. They're just fighting themselves. But still, it's interesting. It looks great. And then at the end, the whole pincer movement idea is what really makes it interesting and related to the main plot. Uh, however, there are some plot holes that I would like to talk about. First of all, how wounds heal. Uh, because Cat was shot, in normal time so they try to heal cat by reverting her or inverting her and isn't blood cells in our bodies uh, a part of our bodies so when humans are inverted the whole thing is inverted including the blood cells so the wound should still get worse so theoretically she would still bleed to death but I don't know I guess um, another thing is, um, actually the opening scene, the opera scene, is still a little bit confusing because I, I don't understand why would someone bring a piece of nuclear weapon with them while watching the opera. But I guess you, you kind of have to do that if you're scared that someone else may steal them uh, wherever they are. Um, my biggest uh, confusion with the movie is, um, so the protagonist had to look for Neil in the future uh, by going back in time of course then he needs to be in the inverted state for years then which I don't know how it works how, how do they eat 
because food is external so they can't digest food then can they so I and they so they have to wait they have to wait and it's not like after you go forward in time and then you go backwards it's not like you can just teleport back to wherever you came from you need to relive your life again in that time period which is kind of uh, unfortunate I guess but um, still amazing movie amazing movie nonetheless um, I love this movie I think the idea is genius the action sequences mind-blowing I am saying Tenet is mind-blowing and I'm giving it a decent to strong 8 out of 10. So have you watched Tenet from So have you watched Tenet from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. Um I don't know what I should review next. Uh, maybe some of the latest movies in 2020, you know, The New Mutants, uh, I'm thinking of ending things. I'm also planning to watch The Devil all the time. 